You finished that last vlog with a very inspiring rant, which was regarding the three essential skills that every man should have. First is being the best at what you do. Second of all, to be in high demand. And third of all, being on the market trends. Yes. What are the trends that you're seeing for this or the rest of this year? Crypto's at the, at the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. of of what's taking place content creation is at the pinnacle and building businesses online the internet is what i like to call the digital gold rush in the year 1848 rumors spread in the eastern colonies that in california there was a man that had found gold in the american river and once the president announced that these rumors were true 300,000 people moved from east to west whether it was by land or by sea, to find gold. Mm. Today, we live in a similar opportunity. We live in a digital gold rush. The opportunity to change and fundamentally radically revolutionize your existence within just a couple of years by tapping into the internet. The internet has changed everything because it doesn't matter if you're in Africa, South, South America, Asia. If you have access to the internet and access to a device, you can build a business, you can make money. You can change your life for free. You can tap into AI tools today. You can not even, English cannot even be your native language and you can be doing copywriting in English that is verified, vetted, cross-checked, cross-examined, punctuation, ready to go. And you can sell copywriting services, 100%. Why not? You could literally build an agency from utilizing free ad tools. You can be a content creator and get millions of views like you, a fitness, most most fitness influencers, most, most fitness people are broke, mm -hmm. but you utilize the internet and the digital gold rush to change your reality. So that is being on market trends. Being on the internet is the biggest market trend and understanding that there's digital currency to, to power the internet is extremely important. Back to your other two points, you need to be in high demand, but you also need to be the best at what you do because the marketplace rewards value and it rewards quality. It's not just about being the first one to show up, it's about being the best. You need to be the best at what you do, you need to be in high demand and you need to be irreplaceable. A lot of people are going to be replaced by AI. A lot of people are going to be replaced by another competitor. So you become irreplaceable by carving yourself in the marketplace as a person of authority or as an organization of authority by being ahead of market trends or utilizing and leveraging the new technology that's coming out so that you don't get squashed and that is a recipe for massive success. Mm -hmm. I remember it was the summer of 2021. Like I was living what I thought would be the ultimate life. When I'd, I'd moved to Ibiza, I was there for a couple of months, wasn't really doing, I mean, you can't call it work. It was a couple of hours a day creating content for social media just to keep things ticking along. And it was just a pure hedonistic lifestyle, which was fun for a couple of weeks, then it gets very repetitive. Then you somehow strangely get like, I wouldn't call it depressed, but you're quite Your vibrational flat. frequency you're just, is lower. You're just like, what am I doing? Like, I, I literally have no purpose. I'm not being useful in any way, shape or form. It's like a very selfish existence, existence. just trying to enjoy life, but it's actually not really bringing you that much enjoyment. And I think that was when, at the end of that summer, I was like, hang on, all these things which I thought would make me happy, they're not actually making me happy. That's why retirement isn't a thing. Yeah, because you can either be a consumer or a producer and you look at you look at the people that consume all day. Yeah, they're just consuming, consuming. You can see it on their face. You can see it in, in, in their habits. You can see it in their belief system. You can see it in their thinking patterns. The people that produce real value, they have to show up every day. And if yeah. you have a uh, value to provide, then you can find purpose and purpose and hope is the things that once you make, makes you want to wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and actually achieve something. That's a, it literally was a mini retirement and I had a taste of what it was like. <laughs> I was like, I do not like this. And I think that's, that's a big fallacy that a lot of people aspiring to be entrepreneurs think of is, Hey, you know, I'm going to work five years, make a ton of money, 10 years, and I'm just going to go live on a beach, sip, sip some coconuts and have a good time, get a margarita. And I'm just going to, hang around for the next 50 years mm -hmm. and it's going to be a blob of unproductive bullshit. And it's not a very productive, happy lifestyle because we are created to work. We are meant to produce. We are meant to provide value. And if you can provide value, you bring purpose. Absolutely. And what I love about this journey, creating content is 
And what I love about the internet, the internet is not only a democratizer of opportunity, but it also is a democratizer of opinion. So you get so many opinions and so much feedback from who you are, the content that you produce, and people keep you accountable, they keep you in check, they keep you uh, they keep you on your toes, which also brings purpose because you start evaluating, air. it's kind of like a mirror. You start seeing areas in your life that need improvement. So you see somebody making your more money, you're like, okay, well, that's probably possible. Or you see somebody with a better physique, or you get roasted on the internet uh, and you're like, oh, well, maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe mm -hmm. I should work on this. And you utilize it as a, as a source of inspiration to continue leveling up. You mentioned before a little bit about peptides. What, what's your thoughts on the whole biohacking scene, peptides, things like that to optimize health and well-being? The peptide scene, the whole bioregulator scene, obviously there's, there's areas of massive hype, but you look at David Sinclair, who's the leading figure when it comes to studying the brain, and he pushes one peptide known as NAD+. And NAD+, was created in the 40s and 50s, uh, pre-World War, pre-Cold War between Russia and the United States as a, as a protein that uh, gives you neuroplasticity, helps with neuroplasticity, it helps with rewiring neural networks and helping with Alzheimer's and dementia. So I think it's a new area of science that is being developed and something that a lot of people should be uh, looking into consult with your doctor mm -hmm. for more information. <laughs> <laughs> I think for sure there's, uh, unfortunately it seems to be one of those things that's only accessible for people who have money. Like I went to, uh, there's a few biohacking places here, uh, but if you don't have much money to spend, like a lot of those uh, uh, off limits, like if you wanna go there, do 20 minutes of red light therapy, uh, do a cold plunge, do the cryo, go in the oxygen chamber, like that's gonna set you back a bit. So I think for those people who don't have the access to it or the funds to pay for it yet, I think just going back to the basics of- Free, there's free things. Consuming nutrient dense, unprocessed foods, high quality, exercising, prioritizing sleep, not drinking tap water. Not drinking alcohol. The alcohol as well. Making sure you ground, making sure you get good sunlight, making sure, like you said, be in a situation where you have a life of balance. Most people live a life of imbalance mm. and they're not, they're not at peak performance. So you can do a lot of things for free that require zero, do zero dollars that are gonna keep you healthy. Stretching, mobility. Oh yeah, last, last time I saw you, we went through some stretching. We, went through after, session. we had a good time. Yeah, I felt good, good after session. that. That actually inspired me to get on uh, the stretching journey. Yes. I, I uh, Because of that, and then um, there was a tightness on my left side. I think it was a snapping hip syndrome or something. It sounds nasty, but it's not as nasty as you think. It's quite common. Uh, every time I walked, I had a little click on my left hip. So apparently there was some tightness in the IT band, a few other issues as well, just purely from lack of stretching. And obviously I am no spring chicken now, I'm 33. Um, I've been thinking about it now, I've been training like consistently every week for like 15 years. Crazy. No stretching. Yeah. Like, of course it's gonna catch up to me. Yeah. So mobility, mobility is extremely important. You already built the skeletal muscle, which is gonna give you longevity, but look how many people walk, look at old people try to walk out of, a, yeah. just get out of a car. Yeah. or just get out, get up from a chair or the inability to sit, s squat. Yeah. It's horrible. So I got, I got to get my gains up, not gonna lie. But uh, next time we do part three next year, mm -hmm. hopefully I'm, uh, I'm a little bit closer to your level. <laughs>